Thank you very much, Dr. Maliki, for enlightening us on what we call the enlightened management. We have many names for our management, the real management, the enlightened management, the management of humility. The point that has emerged clear and loud from Dr. Maliki's discourse is that when we are dealing with human beings, we are dealing with a universe and a universe which is unknown to us. Fortunately, in our bank, we have given a considerable attention and a very high priority to management. We believe that every man and woman in this institution is a manager in whatever position he or she may be. It is our motto that he is not a manager who does not allow himself to be managed by those whom he is managing, equally managed. He is not a manager who does not produce managers better than himself. And what is he managing? As doc Dr. Meligi has said, is he managing the faces and the bodies, the physical energy or the psychic energy? And how to manage this psychic energy which is unknown commodity? I'm not going to dilate upon the management aspect at this stage, but I may just briefly mention that we have not been able to find any other way except to feel and experience humility. And it is through humility that the streams of psychic energy of all the individuals flow and are released, released and flow and then interfuse. Interfusion in our language is the highest form of communication. Communication is not just listening. Communication is listening with a feeling behind that. It is the fusion of the feelings. We believe that all your wisdom, all the knowledge, is in the feelings. Mind is just an agency for articulation and communication in a limited manner. The total communication is possible only through the interfusion of the streams of energy psyche. And that is where the emphasis on humility. Now before getting into the subject of management which would come under item four of the agenda, in the interest of time, I would revert quickly and briefly to item one of the agenda, which is making of a bank in the capsule of humility and making history. BCC has made history and really it's what a pleasure it is for us when we come to the next subject that history is now beckoning us to make BCC, to satisfy history, to satisfy itself, to satisfy its instinct and its urge. History has the urge to see BCC become history a part of their pride position. Talking of history, what is history? Recording of the events through the subjectivity of historians or history is the flow of events in their reality and the reflection of the events. How is it possible to reflect the truth and the reality of the events? It may not be visible to us, but history is written in the chapters which are formulated by the historians. And history is written on the pages of time and quality. That is real history. Irrespective of the fact whether it is reflected or not, what is the value of history? Value of history, the value of history is not just in knowing the distorted and the twisted facts coming through the subjectivity of the historian and through the limitations of his knowledge and understanding about the facts. BCC's history is being written, one, through the balance sheets and any one of us who would write it through our subjectivity in all its limit, uh, in its inadequacy. And there is a history which is written on the pages of time and quality. We are concerned with that. It has its own value. It is on the moral plane of BCC's operation. That is the history which is being written on the subjects of BCC's major purpose, submission to God, our desire to move towards God through love and faith, serving humanity and success. The history that is written in giving, Mr. Amir Siddiqui had given me a few, only a few of the responses and reactions of the staff and the people who have received whatever we could give in material terms. They are soul stirring. 10,000 people giving in their own good judgment and discretion to any good cause, that is an unwritten history, but more important than the recorded history. BCC's culture and BCC's ethos in its dynamic state is its history. A smile to a colleague, a prayer for a child you meet on the street, that is BCC's history. 
I'll discuss about this at a later stage because we have to contain our proceedings within the time frame and very interesting about what time frame is. Time is nothing more than a measurement of the phenomena and flow of change and movement. We are changing, we are moving. Time is just a measure of that. Time is no substance. Time is no existence. Interwoven with the phenomena of change of the things which are in existence. Well, that again is little philosophical, but that is the truth and that is our vision. We will talk about vision also. Coming to the recorded history, our balance sheet of 1983, the year-end results, we have closed our balance sheet with assets of 12.3 billion US dollars with shareholders equity of 810 million dollars with total profit, gross profit of 361 million dollars. We will talk about this. Also, we had an aspiration of making a profit of 450 million dollars in gross terms. I do not want to extend any apology or reasons why we have not achieved this, except and beyond the fact that we were just equal to $360 million and not to $450 million. Not that this is a, not a good profit. The ratios, as would be spelled out by Mr. Twitchin, would indicate that the results are not only extraordinary, but unparalleled. Only a few institutions would have made and produced results like the one that we have during 1983. And that is what is making the history. My only apology is that the quality and quantity of our energy psyche and our vision was just $360 million and not $450 million. And in the process, we are going to examine as to where we stand in terms of our quality and quantity and our ability to translate it in 1984 and how we are going to do it. What is our strategy? We would also talk on what a dynamic strategy is. Uh, I would make only two points. I would like to highlight only two points on these ratios and the financials. One some, is something which we consider as a great virtue and strength for the bank and our American friends would consider something where we have not progressed and where, where we should have progressed. That is the decrease in advances in proportion to the increase in the resources, I mean the credits the lending, there is a decrease in that. The loans have just increased by 18.6%, whereas the deposits have increased by 23%, and the total resources have increased by 27%. Perhaps we have lacked in marketing in this area, and we have improved our liquidity as a result of that. We always draw the greatest satisfaction in remaining highly liquid and at the same time making sufficient profit. The second point I would like to highlight is the expenditure as, as a percentage to average assets. In 1980, our expenditure was 2.92%. In 1981, it came down to 2.64%. In 82, it came down to 2.51%. And today, it is 2.45%. I believe it's a sign of the health of the organization that our expenditure in ratio to our total assets is being controlled and kept within limits and being decreased. If there is anything else that Mr. Salim Siddiqui or Mr. Nakhvi or any of my colleagues would like to express on this, he would be welcome. If they believe that enough has been said, then we would close this up. I had talked about making of history and I had said that history is not in recording the facts and figures. BCC's real history would be in building up its management and the quality of management, quality of human resources, the new concepts of management, our insight and our vision in what management is and the history that is recorded by way of facts and figures would follow. It would be interesting for you to know, although I am not yet, the details and full information, neither have I total authenticity about what I am going to say, but I have been, we have been advised and we have come to know from fairly reliable sources, not that we are trying to <coughs> compare ourselves with an organization which is the largest bank in the Western world, but it gives us some satisfaction that we, such a small and a tiny institution, only 11 years in existence, has been doing something for a long time, ever since our inception, which the wisdom of which has been perhaps now appreciated by others.
not that they are copying us. We understand that the Citibank has recently, in the evolution of their management, decided to give up the designations in their hierarchies. In our concept, the designation is the quality of the individual, his effectiveness and not his assertiveness, his ability to interfuse, to relate with others, his ability distilled in its essence in the form of humility. I do not know how far the concept of humility and interfusion would be introduced in modern management in other institutions. We started with humility and we are still on that subject. Humility at the point where your consciousness and your awareness meets all that is in your no consciousness. We all have admitted and Dr. Maliki has expressed that human beings are a universe in themselves and the universe rather the cosmos is what it is. What is the means to communicate and to know that other than humility or the state of no existence, the realization or the experiencing of humility, what is there other than this which would contain all that is and that is happening, all that is in its dynamic shape to comprehend that, to have a feel of that, what is there other than humility? It is, I have no doubt that everyone in BCC knows the virtue and the value of humility. It is now a question of experiencing it and feeling it and practicing it. We have still a long way to go. We have made enough progress. Where is the vanity and arrogance of designations. How does the designation establish and proves your ability? How does it allow you the freedom of self-expression? How does the mere designation allows you the freedom of expression and the freedom of ability to prove your ability? Our designations are our reality and our reality is humility. We had decided to have our lunch at 2.30 and therefore we disperse for one hour. Hopefully we would be back just in one hour. We have already talked of humility. We talked about this most important subject <clears throat> almost two-thirds of the day, we will talk about it again tomorrow. The substantive subjects of this agenda are number four and number seven. Number four deals with management and then number seven with marketing. But we have always believed that neither management nor marketing or, nor any activity could survive or exist unless it has an environment it has a home where to live and it is humility, it is the spirit, it is hope, it is the culture and the ethos created by these that institutions and societies can exist. So we move on to the subject of a spirit.